Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, AED744. So today, guys, we're doing AFCON reaction. Let's start with the first guy we've got here is Equator Guinea forward, Guinea Bissau 2. Wow, Equator Guinea, man. Take a flipping bow. This is a team you cannot write off. I wrote them off past in the, in the recent editions, and I need to start apologizing because this team is just a team that is so frustrating to play against. They're so well organized defensively, and they're just, they're just a thorn, man. They're just a thorn to deal with. Let's try the first goal, man. It is so, man. Great, great goal there. Um, I don't know what the defense was doing for that first goal because the first goal defending was absolutely shambolic from Guinea-Bissau. Mane uh, was holding on the ball way too long. And so presses on it and scores to make it 1-0. And at this point, I'm like thinking to myself, okay, can um, how can Equator Guinea do? And then Guinea-Bissau, they had a good spell of domination after, after they conceded. Um, they took the, uh, the equalize right there, as you can see right there. And then for the second half, man, Miranda scoring that goal there, the second, uh, his first goal in the day. And then the third goal, man, Nisso, man, getting that goal there uh, to make it 3-1. And the defending for Guinea-Bissau was absolutely shambolic. Nisso scores again to get a hat-trick. He rounded off the keeper. I think he rounded off the keeper for the third goal, his second goal, actually. And the third goal, man, the defense was pushing up. They were trying to, you know, obviously get a goal back. And in the process, they got counterattack, and Nisso scores. It was initially given offside. But it counted, and then they score a consolation goal right at the end. For Guinea-Bissau, man, this is absolutely de de terrible. They were so bad defensively. They had their good periods of attacking momentum, but ultimately the issue with them is that defensively they were shambles. They were absolutely shambles in this game, and it was really, really disappointing. And Nisso, man, shout out to Nisso, man. This is a guy that's playing the third division of Spanish football and has scar scored a hat-trick. And I believe the last time a hat-trick was scored was the 2008 half goal. That's absolutely insane. We haven't seen a hat trick in the AFCON for a long time. And the fact that he's got more hat tricks in the AFCON than your legendary players like Salah, your Drogba, and these kind of players is just absolutely insane. More recent is just absolutely insane. So, Nisso, man, putting Equator Guinea through. Equator Guinea is now through to round of 16. It's just a matter of which position are they going to be. Are they going to finish? Are they going to finish top of this group, second place, or third? And obviously, Guinea Bissau, with this result, are eliminated. Because even if Guinea-Bissau do beat Nigeria on the final match day, Ivory Coast have the better head-to-head. -head, and they cannot finish behind Ivory Coast. So, Guinea-Bissau, man, um, it's going to be interesting. And yeah, shout-out to Nisso, man. Scored a hat-trick. A wonderful hat-trick for him, man. A very, very well-earned hat-trick. And I'm, I'm happy for him, man. I'm really happy for him. And this guy doesn't even play a striker. I think he plays as a right-back um, for his club team. And the fact that he managed to score a hat-trick for his national team is absolutely insane. And he, he probably is their best player. And shout-out to Onao, who also got an assist for one of the goals. I think it was probably the fourth goal. I think he got the assist for if I don't remember correctly. No, no, it was actually the second goal. It was the second goal that Guinea-Bissau, Equatorial Guinea scored. As for Guinea-Bissau, man, absolutely dreadful. They weren't that bad defensively. They weren't that bad attacking-wise, but defensively they were shambles. They were absolutely shambles. And I'm very disappointed with Guinea-Bissau. And um, they got to work a lot for the next AFCON to improve because their center back made two mistakes in the two games they played. Moving on to the other game we got here. It is Ivory Coast nil, uh, Nigeria 1. Nigeria, man. They got it done. They got it done, man. And Ivory Coast, man. I think I might have overhyped this team a bit too much. Because you look at this Ivory Coast team. Their midfield is great. Their defense is great. But, you know, the one area of concern I have is the attack. I look at this attack, and I'm sorry. This attack looks mid. I'm sorry. When you have Boga there, Boga is decent to be fair. Kraso, Kuyame, and then you have players like Bamba, Pepe. It just didn't work, you know? And for me, I think they're really missing Sebastian Haller. I think Sebastian Haller would have added so much difference. And even Andingra as well. I think these two players could have contributed so much more. Because I feel like for Nigeria men in this game, they, were, they had a game plan in this game. Be defensively solid and frustrate Ivory Coast. And a lot of Ivory Coast's chances, they came out... Um, they had to go out wide, you know, just or just go for goal from any distance. You know, I think Sangare was just shooting from anywhere, um, if I'm not mistaken. Or was this, uh, yeah, yeah, Sangare, I think he was just shooting long shots just for the sake of it because they just couldn't create anything, you know. And as for the goalkeeper, Nigeria, he, he, had made, he had made some good saves, but ultimately the shots that Ivory Coast had in this game was just straight at the keeper. He had to make a world-class save, you know. And then it gets, we get talked about the penalty, and then we talk about Osman, man, Victor Osman, man. I'm sorry, Victor Osman for me has to step up more for his country. This is his country, Nigeria. Okay, you can do all this amazing stuff for Napoli, win the Scudetto, you know, be this kind of Napoli legend. But if you want to be remembered as one of the best players 
in this generation, you have to succeed with your country. It's as simple as that. And I know Victor Osman can do this because we've seen it before with Nigeria. He scored in the last game. Victor Osman, you got to score from that position. Jaquazi, man, another terrible game from him. Lukman as well. Nigeria were so solid defensively. I have to give uh, Jose Pereira some credit. And that he actually got his defensive game plan spot on by playing a five at the back. And I think while at the time I was like, eh, this isn't going to work, it actually worked really well because they frustrated Ivory Coast. Ivory Coast had to go out wide to create chances, and they were very, very defensively solid. Now we get to the penalty decision. For me, the penalty is a bit harsh. I think it's a bit soft in some ways. Diomde takes Osman down to the box. And it just feels like nowadays, anytime there's like a little bit of contact in the box, penalty more often than not is going to be given. Referee gives a penalty. And Trusto Kuang scores a penalty. And now a lot of people probably did expect a Victor Osman to score the penalty. I think the reason why Victor Osman didn't take the penalty is because there would be so much pressure. And if Victor Osman had missed the penalty, oh man, he would have got slandered on social media. The amount of abuse Victor Osman would have got if he had missed the penalty would have been shocking. So I'm actually, I think it was actually good that he didn't take the penalty. Because we see that he's a confidence-based player. And Trusto King, he was the guy that took the penalty against Ghana in the World Cup qualifiers and the playoffs, the second leg. And I remember very well. And he took the penalty, scored the penalty, a very, very solid penalty. And from that point on, like I said, man, Ivory Coast just couldn't, they just couldn't find a way to break down this Nigerian defense. You know, kept trying and trying and trying. And I want to shout out to some players from Nigeria. I thought Bassi, for me, was man of the match. I thought defensively he was solid. I think he won all of his tackles he did. And he was just fantastic. Um, other players that stood out to me was Aya. I thought Aya was good. Uh... Nab Nabil, I thought, was decent for the goalkeeper. And for Ivory Coast, man, there wasn't really anyone that stood out to me. Everyone else was kind of mid, to be honest. And I think for um, Ivory Coast, man, you just have to be disappointed with yourselves. Like, like, I think it just showed how bad Guinea Bissau were, you know. And I just think for Ivory Coast, man, this is a big wake-up call for them. And I think for Ivory Coast, obviously, you'd rather lose in the group stage than lose later on the tournament. And now they're self this is where things get tricky for them. Because Ivory Coast now have to basically beat uh, uh, Equatorial Guinea. That's going to be a tough game. We know how good Equatorial Guinea are. They're very stubborn, very, very difficult to break down. So if Ivory Coast don't win that game, there is a potential possibility they may not make it through because three points may not be enough. It may not be enough to make it through. And for Equatorial Guinea, man, if they could beat Ivory Coast, that could make that could make this group interesting. So let's see how this group pans out because this group A has got a lot more interesting than I thought it would be. So... It's going to be interesting. So, I think that's pretty much it for this game, guys. We're going to go ahead and move on to the next game we got here. It's Egypt 2, Ghana 2. <sighs> Ghana, Ghana, Ghana. This was a game where I thought Ghana was a better team for most of the game. I thought Egypt, for me, for most of this game, were not great in this game. And I think for if you're a Ghanaian, man, you must be devastated with your team. for take it Because I saw the first half, man. Um, I, by the way, I didn't watch the... I kind of... I had to watch the highlights for this game. I didn't watch the full game for this. Um... I would judge it from the highlights. Um, Ghana had the word the better team the first half. They were they were going straight at Egypt. I don't think Egypt really created any chance in the first half, if I remember correctly. Maybe I'm wrong in the comments. Maybe you guys can correct me in the comments below. And for me, Muhammad Kudos, man. I said this guy is going to be Egypt, Ghana's savior. And without Kudos, Ghana is screwed. Because he is that difference maker for Ghana. He could single-handedly... Because I said this before in my predictions, guys. If Ghana didn't have Kudos, they get grouped. They genuinely would get grouped in the AFCON. They didn't have Kudos. And Kudo scored a fantastic goal. That goal he scored right before halftime was insane. Salah got injured, guys. This is a huge, huge loss for Egypt. I don't know how long he's going to be out for. We're going to have to see in the coming days. Because if Salah misses the tournament for Egypt, that's going to be a big blow for Egypt. That's going to be a big, big blow. And um, it's going to definitely hurt Egypt's chances of winning the trophy. Then the second, and then the goal, man. Marmouche, man. What a goal that was. And Inyaki Williams, man. He made a stupid, stupid error. Gave away the ball in such a bad position. Marmouche then capitalizes upon it and scores to make it 1-1. And then you're thinking to yourself, okay, Ghana, you really gave up the lead like that? Okay. And then they take the lead again. Dennis Odo and Kuda scores again from the set and from the from the corner, I think. I think. A long, a great, great banger. 71st minutes. I surely Ghana's not going to screw this up. And then the man, Chris Hutton, brings on Bukhari. And guess what? Bukhari makes a mistake and Egypt equalized Mustafa Muhammad. It's just ridiculous from Ghana because, like, I'm sorry, but Ghana for me in this game were t they should have won this game. They should have won this game with the amount of chances, 
with the fact they were lead in the leading position twice in the game only to concede only to give up the lead is just embarrassing and for egypt man as i said they were really under you got to give a credit to egypt though egypt were fantastic without salah because a lot of people said egypt is done without salah without salah they have no chance of doing this and you can see how this egypt team was like you know what we're gonna do this we're gonna take it to ghana and show that we're not just salah fc you know and for Ghana, man, this is a really, really disastrous for them because basically now heading to the next game, they have to basically beat Mozambique. And if they don't beat Mozambique, they're in trouble because uh, a draw is not going to be enough. A draw won't be enough. So it's going to be interesting to see what Cape Verde does against Mozambique. And Egypt, man, they're also not in a good position either because if Egypt, uh, if, it, it depends what happens in that Cape Verde game. It depends what happens. If Cape Verde wins, Egypt cannot top this group. So, if Cape Verde wins, this group is going to get very fascinating. So, I'm really looking forward to see how this pans out, guys. AFCON, man. We got so many shocking results in AFCON. And that's why the beauty of the AFCON. Because Africa Cup of Nations is so unpredictable. I'm really looking forward to see how this all pans out. So, I hope you guys did enjoy this video, guys. Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. Um, and give your thoughts on all three of the games, man. And, um, like I said, man. So, remember, guys, like and subscribe. And, yeah. That was it, guys. Our own we're going to have a big recap stream of the AFCON on Sunday.